Time now for the morning rush. Let's start things with Kristen Curry. Good morning. Still looking at the possibility of spotty to scattered storms and showers this afternoon, favoring areas in and around the higher train before rolling off into the lower elevations. We'll go spot storms here in Albuquerque. These continue and actually spread out in coverage and intensity as we get into Tuesday, Wednesday and Thursday. Sarah. Right now, I-25 northbound is closed at San Antonio as police continue to investigate what led to a rollover accident. Right now, traffic is being diverted onto San Mateo. Right now, it's unclear what led to that crash or if anybody was injured. We've placed numerous calls into APD and BCSO. We'll keep you updated on air and online. Adam. A new scheme this morning is targeting local veterans through their medical care. According to the Federal Trade Commission, Thieves are pretending to be from the Department of Veterans Affairs office. Officials say that schemers are using a phone number that's almost identical to the Veterans Choice Program or VCP and asking for bank info. To protect yourself from schemes like this, you can go to the full story. Check out the details on the KRQE News app. We're expecting to learn more this week from state police on an officer involved shooting near grants that turned deadly. Friday night, Albuquerque SWAT officers assisted state police in responding to a tip that a murder suspect was at a home in San Rafael. Police say when officers got there, that suspect, 38 year old Hector Gamboa, barricaded himself inside. And after hours of trying to negotiate, state police say an Albuquerque officer opened fire, killing Gamboa. Developing right now, the man who deputies say caused chaos in the East Mountains remains locked up. BCSO says 38 year old Marcio Lujan is the man who tried stealing from a restaurant, stole a car, refused to surrender to deputies, then lit a fire. They say Lujan would not come out of the business exer play, and when he did, a fire erupted and he tried to run once he was handcuffed. He's now been charged with a slew of crimes, including arson, burglary, aggravated assault, and car theft. And meanwhile, employees of that business that burned down will likely be working remotely this week while the owner tries to find a new building, a new location. Right now, Exer Play, a playground equipment company, is no longer standing, but they are still open. DeBuck says Exer Play has received overwhelming support. He's already seen 20 offers for free office space. This morning, tensions are rising between the United Nations and North Korea hours after the country fired another short range ballistic missile. U.S. officials say the missile flew for six minutes before landing in the waters off mainland Japan over the weekend in the country's exclusive economic zone. It's not clear what projectile it was or if it was even successful. New comments from German leader Angela Merkel, who says Europe can no longer rely on the U.S. Merkel urged European Union nations to stick together in the face of new uncertainty over the U.S. and other challenges. The comments follow President Trump saying he needed more time to decide if the U.S. would continue backing a key climate accord. And news new this morning, a young woman is safe after a possible kidnapping scare. According to BCSO, yesterday afternoon, a man was seen forcing an unidentified woman into his vehicle near 4th Street in Chavez. Deputies were looking for Brandon Heckman, who they thought could help with the investigation. Last night, though, deputies found Heckman and all parties involved. And nobody was hurt. An alleged burglar is free again this morning after APD says a homeowner and a son held him down until officers could arrest him. This happened Saturday morning at a home near 98th and I-40. APD says a homeowner and his son detained the man who broke into their home. According to a criminal complaint, when officers got to the scene, that man, 19-year-old Jeremy Martinez, managed to slip away but ran right into police. Happening today, President Trump is set to mark Memorial Day in a ceremony at Arlington National Cemetery after returning from his first foreign trip. After calling his nine day trip a big success on Twitter, the president denounced the media for using anonymous sources in stories about the White House. On Sunday night, Trump suggested that increased spending could be the key to improving the nation's health care system. Colorado voters could soon weigh in on whether to slap fines on wireless retailers that sell smartphones to preteens. This measure would not only prohibit retailers from selling directly to kids under 13, it would also require them to ask an adult purchasing a smartphone the age of the person who's going to use it. A retailer in violation could face fines of up to $20,000. On to a new study that suggests patients undergoing the most common surgeries for obesity could end up with significant changes in intestinal microbes that could keep them from uh, keep weight off for the long term. The findings may pave the way for new obesity therapies. Kristen. 
the Gila National Forest is closed because of a fire. Some of the Kamado Ranger District is actually shut down to battle that Baca fire. It was sparked by lightning earlier this month and it's burned more than 2,500 acres there. Smoke from uh, can actually be seen by Kamado. So that's something you're going to want to watch for. But when it comes to Albuquerque, our fire danger is actually starting to lighten up a bit because we've got storm chances in the forecast. That's why that Metro Threat Index is up to a four. We have spot storms with the threat of lightning. So if you are going to be outdoors today, make sure as soon as those storms start to develop, you head indoors. But temperatures, nothing to worry about. We're going to be looking at high temperatures in the low 80s this afternoon. Adam. Many people are spending the final day of Memorial Day weekend at Elephant Butte. With water levels on the rise, marine enforcement officers are cracking down on unsafe boaters. So far, officers say there have only been a few minor accidents. Three people drowned there, though, over the last year and a half. That's more than average. Some of the big concerns, towing broken boats, people using floats near the shore, and drunk boaters. New this morning, New Mexico State University will not be closing any of its 12 agricultural science centers yet. According to the Las Cruces Sun News, earlier this month it looked into the centers as it grapples with less funding in the face of a statewide budget crisis. The Dean for the College of Agricultural, Consumer and Environmental Sciences say closures are a last resource. A new recall to tell you about this morning, about 28,000 Cobalt and Greenworks brands of cordless electric lawnmowers sold at Lowe's are being recalled because they could catch fire. Those lawnmaker, or lawnmowers were sold from 2014 to 2016. The maker? Hong Kong Sunrise Trading says owners should remove the battery and contact the company for a free repair. Five fires have been reported, but so far, no injuries. Kristen? Time now for a check on your Monday morning commute. Like Sarah mentioned, we do have that rollover crash that has I-25 northbound at San Antonio closed. Now traffic is being diverted at the San Mateo exit. It's already starting to slow down, so that is the area of concern. Everything else is moving smoothly at the hour. Happening today, many New Mexicans will be enjoying the wine scene at the Albuquerque Wine Fest. The 17th annual event kicked off this weekend at Balloon Fiesta Park, offering guests a chance to sample wine from more than two dozen wineries. There's also plenty of local food, art, and music. The festival continues today from 1230 to 630, and as always, drink responsibly. This morning, history is made after the 101st running of the Indianapolis 500. In a race marred by a series of crashes, professional race driver Takuma Sato crossed the finish line first. He's the first Japanese driver to win the iconic race. <laughs> Good for him. <laughs> All right, time now for the five facts. We will start with number five. What do you think? That's what the new name holder of the Penton University Stadium wants to know this morning. After signing a $10 million deal for 10 years with UNM, the owners of Dream Style Remodeling are actively collecting feedback on sign concepts. Here's what they look like. Of course, we have a full link and all those pictures online at carrycomedy.com so you can submit your choice. Yeah, pretty cool. Tomorrow, no, lawmakers are expected to reconvene in Santa Fe to finish up the special session. On Friday, Governor Martinez approved parts of a new budget and revenue package that lawmakers sent her, but she vetoed proposed tax increases that would shore up the state's reserves. Lawmakers could try to pass more bills when they reconvene tomorrow or try to override her vetoes. On to number three, the man who deputies say caused chaos in the East Mountains that ended with a business burned to the ground is locked up facing charges this morning. BCSO says 38-year-old Marcio Lujan tried stealing from a restaurant, stole a car, refused to surrender to deputies, then lit a fire. They say Lujan barricaded himself inside Exert Play. It's a playground equipment company and tried to run once he was handcuffed. Deputies say Luan has a history of arrests for drugs and DWI. At number two, watching for some scattered storms this afternoon today. Everybody will be comfortable, though, with widespread 60s, 70s, and 80s. I do expect these storm chances to continue through midweek. On to number one, today is Memorial Day. There are many events scheduled around the state to honor those who gave their lives while serving our country. A ceremony is set to begin at 9 at the New Mexico Veterans Memorial. Mayor R.J. Berry will be there. In Santa Fe, there's set to be a parade of flags, opening remarks, bagpipe music, and a wreath laying starting at 10. That's at Santa Fe National Cemetery. And Rio Rancho has a parade also starting at 10 a.m. and ending at Veterans Monument Park. 